I was this much. And I saw myself standing at Archie's gallery in front of this big, huge rack of birthday cards. I wanted to pick the perfect one. After all, it was for my perfect person. So I went up on my toes and I picked it up and I kind of had this intuition that this would be the perfect one. I read the card and the front of it said, Dear Dad, I always want to follow your footsteps. I opened the card and it said dot, 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 but they always lead to the couch. And there was this fat man sitting on the couch with, you know, his foot up with Z's coming out of his nostril. And I said, this is exactly what my father does. This is the perfect card. And I said, I definitely want to walk in your shoes, Dad. Then I became this much. And my mom walked up to us one day and said, I have decided that we are sending your father away to Dubai with a job. I mean, how could you argue that? Because this was the time when I had realized that my father had changed six jobs in seven years, had overwritten checks, had dumped us under this debris of loans, and had gambled our money away under the pretext of having fun. My dad needed rehab. A part of me kind of just felt like it had disappeared because I thought I'd never see him again, him again. But then there was this other side of me that felt happy because I felt maybe this is what he needed. Maybe this is what we needed. And when I see him again, I'd be proud of him because he would be a better person or maybe he would be a better parent. But it's my dad. He doesn't stick. He was back in three months and as Always, everything seemed normal, but he had looked deflated. He had looked like he was run over. He looked older than before. I secretly prayed. Maybe something inside him had changed. One day, I invited him to be a part of an audience like this. I said, come, watch your daughter on stage talking to strangers. You love it. Secretly, I wanted him to be a part of our family again. I got onto stage and he could be anywhere. I looked around. The show started and was over, but he didn't show. We went back home, expecting him to be at home. Open the door. No. Those were the days when we didn't have cell phones, so we couldn't call and double check with double ticks if he would be around and he had seen our messages or not. So we just sat and waited. And then finally, at half past 12, I heard familiar footsteps and the doorbell ring and I had this anger from the bottom of my belly because I wanted to say, you have put us through so much anxiety, so much grief and so much agony. I opened the door and I saw his face. His eyes were wet and his face almost felt like it was touching the ground. I just made way. He walked in and sat on the couch. He looked at me moved his hands out, cupped his face, and said, do you know what happened to me? Someone stole my wallet. Someone took all my money away. I had no money to buy a ticket. I haven't eaten anything, and I have walked 12 miles. I said, Papa, it's OK. It's fine. It happens to the best of us. Don't worry. It's OK. Just get up, go take a bath, and just eat something. I saw his body lighten up. I saw a small, tiny smile as he walked towards the door to his room. I said, wait, did you just say you walked? He said, yes, why? I said, dad, your shoes are sparkling black and it doesn't have a speck of dust on it and it does not reflect the story that you have just told me. And he said, stammering and loud, he said, don't talk to me like that, I'm your father. And I went to Dubai and I learned how to walk. In that one moment, I felt I had forgotten everything I knew about my father. In that one instance, I felt this mountain of strength inside me. I took a deep breath and I calmly pointed at the door. And I said, you don't need to be a breadwinner to live under this roof. You know what you need to do? Not make a mockery of the people who love you. Work every single day to create a balance because we are the people who love you. But I think we've tried and you've failed. So please leave and never come back. I was 17. I asked my father to leave and I haven't seen him come back into our home ever again. I sent my father away for a lie, but well now I hope, pray and wish that he realizes what it takes to walk, not for 12, 
but in my shoes for just a mile. I look like a stern person and I will remain stern if you don't like, subscribe or share our story and our channel. But if you do these things, I can be very friendly and give you a creepy friendly smile.